Hey guys, what's up? It's Laura Ventura and today I have Keshu on my table. She is a mini golden doodle and first and foremost, I am brushing her with my Chris Christensen comb and I'm making sure that she doesn't have any mats or any knots because I am getting ready to shape her up. Now she comes in every six weeks and I just want to remind you guys that especially with curly coats, 80% of the work has to go into the bath, the drying, and the brushing for your grooms to look spectacular. All right, so another reason why I comb out fully before the groom is because I don't like to stop and brush them out while I am using the clippers to their body. So I, here I am taking my Wal Bavera and I'm gonna start her sanitary trim and I'm doing this on a 15 blade. Now you wanna do this very gently because their areas are very sensitive and you don't wanna give them any razor rash or burn. And also you wanna make sure that your blade is cooled down when you do this. So that is why I do this first thing. So here I switched my blade from a 15 to a 40 and I'm just going to go ahead and trim all the little hairs in between the paw pads and I'm doing this very gently. We're going to take a zero comb and we're going to start on her body. I'm going to clip this on and I'm going to let her smell it because she was really curious and I'm just going to go ahead and take this to her whole entire body except her legs. Once I get to the legs, you'll see how I skim them down. Now her coat is extremely soft and sometimes when you take a comb attachment to a type of coat like this, it might leave lines, but fear not, those lines are gonna erase once the groom is entirely done. So right now I'm just concentrating on taking off as much hair as I can with this comb attachment and as even as I can. Now I started Cashew when she was a teeny tiny puppy and when I get puppies in my van the first thing I do is I do a puppy groom which is not a full haircut it's just like the sanitary the eyes the paw pads and this really introduces them to the grooming process then after that I put them on a schedule and I train them as I go and that is why you see that Cashew is such a good girl. So here I'm going to take the exact same comb attachment that I did on the body and I'm going to skim the legs with this same comb attachment, but I'm not going to dig in too deep. It's just enough to shape it. So when I scissor it, it's half the work. When skimming the inside of the legs, I always do the opposite leg of the leg that is closest to me. So that way I am able to position myself correctly to see exactly what I'm skimming. The same concept goes for the front legs, but know that it's a different shape. So when I'm doing Cashew's front legs, I like them to look long and kind of have a flare at the bottom. So in my head, what I think about is a Christmas tree on how it's narrow on top and then it goes out to the bottom. All right, now I'm going to do the exact same thing to her other side.
right now that I'm almost done with her body, I find a little mat and this is what I don't like to do. I don't like to stop to brush out, but sometimes, especially with curly quotes, you're not going to be able to find all the tangles right away. All right, so now I'm going to take the comb attachment and just run it on the base of her tail and this will just allow me to blend the tail with the body. The back legs should look like an A if you're looking at it from the back. Um, now when I scissor her back legs, uh, legs I'm just going to make that line a lot more defined. Okay, let's start the scissoring process. Now I'm going to take Thick and Thicker by Chris Christensen and this is just a doggy hairspray. It just helps me hold her hair in place because she has such a soft coat. Sometimes it's just hard to um, scissor hair like that because all the little hairs just keep moving. So it really helps me out. Now, first things first, before I start scissoring a leg, the first thing I do is I round out the paw because the width of the paw is going to tell me the width of the leg. Also, I wanna make her paws nice and tight, but I am making sure that her nails are not fully exposed. So remember when I said that I'm gonna make that A a lot more defined, this is what I'm doing now. So the only way to really know if you are cutting all the little hairs evenly is you really have to learn how to comb up because when you're using your scissors, you really wanna get an even cut and it's gonna be really hard if all those hairs are brushed down. So that's why I use Thick and Thicker. It helps me brush up the hair and keep it up all evenly so I could have an even cut. All right guys, let's have a moment of silence for how good that back leg looks right now. So how clean you do the tuck up and the underbody of a dog is going to really make or break your groom. You want them to look really aesthetically pleasing and one of the best ways to do this is to create a really nice shape on their undercarriage and on their tuck up. Right, guys I am going to start with her front leg so first things first we're going to take care of those paws and then I am going to look at her from the side and begin her leg now I'm gonna comb it out completely and then I'm gonna start from the back of her leg and then I'm gonna move on to the sides and then the last thing I'm gonna do is the front of the leg <music> She was very curious about the camera in her face. So as I groom the front legs, I start looking at the back legs from a different angle. So then I just start fixing every little hair that I see out of place. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm the only one that does this, but my eye catches a lot of little things, even if I am in the other side of the dog. So now I am doing her other side, and I think this is how I prefer to groom, is I prefer to look at one side of the dog and then look at the other side of the dog and just break that up into two parts and do it that way.
my chunkers and I'm going to go ahead and go through her entire body with these chunkers her legs everywhere because I just want to soften up my lines a little bit and I want to make sure that no little hair is left behind Cashew has found a really comfy spot on my arm while I groom her tail and this is a good example of the cute little things that happen uh, throughout the grooming process that really just warm my heart. Now when I look at the tail, I look at it on both sides, so the left and the right, and I pretty much position the tail on how it's going to be positioned if she has it up and then I trim it because when she wags her tail, it looks extra cute if it's nicely trimmed like a U. So everything I scissored must be softened up and evened out with thinning shears. Here comes the fun part. We are now going to start shaping up the top of her head and her muzzle and her ears. Everybody loves this part. This is when I take my little guide thinning shears and I remove all the little hairs in between the eyes. Now you could do this with your wall Baveras or a small little blade, but I like it to look natural. So I go ahead and offer the thinning shears. Now I did put a little bit of thick and thicker to help me scissor her top knot. Um, I just always make sure that I'm covering her eyes. And if you wanna put hairspray on their muzzle, what I do is I put the hairspray on the comb that I'm going to use for their muzzle. That way I am avoiding that section altogether because their nose and their mouth are right there. I'm aware that most baby groomers have the most difficulty with the faces. Now I just wanted to show you guys how I break down the face just so it, it's easier for me. Now there's a top knot, then there's the sides of the face, and then there's underneath where they have the little beard. And I make that look like a full circle, especially on cashew. So I go and I groom the sides of the face and I make that a U. Then underneath I make that a slight U and here I am going and combing out all the little hairs on top of her face and then I'm creating another you. So with grooming, it's a lot of shapes and everything just comes all together at the end. So you gotta have to trust the process. And again, if you break things down for yourself, it's gonna be so much easier than looking at a face of a dog and getting overwhelmed because you have to go ahead and groom the whole thing and it has to look perfect. So if you break it down, it's gonna help you. Now, another thing that I do is I always groom their muzzle before I go ahead and groom their top knot. I, I usually leave the top knot for last and then I go ahead and do the ears for the very last section of their face. All right, guys, we are almost done, I promise. So this is the last step of the head and I'm gonna go ahead and give her some cute little ears uh, to go with her cute little face. And I am gonna go ahead and see how they sit 
naturally and I'm just gonna go shape them up from that now I lift them up just to see exactly what I'm cutting but most of the time they're sitting flat so that way I get a really good idea on how they sit on their face and what is the most complimentary shape to give them now I'm thinning shearing her ears just to give her a softer look and then blend all those little hairs at the end of her ears together Hey guys, Cashew is all done. And before I take her home, I'm gonna go ahead and spray her with Pump Silky. And this is from Nature Specialty. It's really long lasting and it smells so fresh. I'm gonna put a little Christmas pandan on her. And for this year's Christmas presents, what I did is I took Christmas pictures of all my doggy clients and put it in as part of their Christmas present. And it was a big hit. So that's what I'm getting her ready for now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you've learned anything new, if I bought any value, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. I greatly appreciate it. I love what I do and I love sharing it with all of you guys. Bye guys. It was great editing this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.